chapter in this video, we are going to be talking about the rule of thirds versus symmetrical compositions. So these are basically two different kind of guides that will help you to kind of create good compositions and uh, help you to place the focal point in an interesting spot of um, your location or of, of your composition. All right. So let's just look at a frame. Okay. So what happens when you hand a camera to a little kid and you say, take a picture of me or take a picture of that tree, whatever you want them to take a picture of, what are they going to do? Well, usually they will take that uh, camera and put the focal point, whatever they're taking a picture of, right smack dab in the middle. Okay, and this is a symmetrical composition because you put something in the middle and either side of this composition is effectively similar. They're not going to be exactly the same, but that kind of creates a symmetry within that composition. Um, and this is not a bad way to create a composition, but it's not. It's also not always the most interesting way since it's people's kind of instinct, or not their instinct, their, um, their first idea they have um, of where to put that focal point is usually just right in the center. So we kind of want to use this rule of thirds to put um, that focal point in a more interesting position. So let's draw a um, some guidelines on here to help us place that. So you basically just divide up this composition into thirds. Okay. You may have seen a little grid like this on um, your phone's camera. I, I know iPhones have a little grid like this, so that's what this is. This is used in illustration, in a lot in photography, a lot in film to create this rule of thirds. So it's basically saying wherever these points intersect, that's a good place to put the focal point. So I can then come here with my focal point. I'll use this face, and I can put the guy here, 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 or here. So let's just do this one here. And so what this just does is... You know, it keeps the space divided up nicely, um, creates a nice balance of space within your composition. It allows you to put in uh, extra shapes, so there's background um, elements. Th these, this rule is used a lot in graphic design, too, so if you ever have text or titles, there's space for that. And really just creates a more natural-looking composition. Natural here, and symmetrical usually looks more staged. It doesn't look like you just grabbed a scene that exists in the real world. It looks like you're the same person. Stand here in the middle, and I will then point this camera at you or draw you that way. Okay. Um, so yeah, so those the rule of thirds will look a lot more natural. So let's just do another example here. So really, it helps you. Uh, good comp. It creates good compositions. Put our guidelines on there again. So usually, uh, especially when I was learning and I was first, you know, practicing a lot more in art school and stuff, I drew those guidelines on there. So here I'm drawing it with a different color. You could just draw those lines really lightly or really thin with the pen or pencil. So let's. I want to do a scene of a nice sailboat in the water. Here we go. Here's our nice sailboat. So usually I put that focal point in there first. Okay, so I can divide this space up in a number of different ways. So I can put my bow on either one of those thirds. So let's just put it down here at the bottom. Ah, there we go. And now I want to place in some other elements. So where am I going to put the horizon line in here? I could cram it up way here and put some hills like right along the top there. But that's going to look a little bit cramped too. Now I'm going to use this third to divide up the composition nicely. Isn't that much nicer? We could put our land over here, some hills and mountains and things like that. Uh, I can put a sun there on that third. Okay, now we have a nice placement of that focal point within the composition. Okay, and another thing it helps you do to do, no focal points on the edges. So avoid the edges. Ugh. Avoid edges of your composition. So that means anything around here. You can put 
things that aren't your focal point along that edge, but do not put a focal point along the edge. So I do not want to come here and put my boat, you know, way down here. So the edge sometimes is called the margins. You don't want uh, something important to go along the margins there, okay? What you want is that focal point, again, right there on a third. And I could put some rocks here, you know, in the foreground, some pieces of grass. I could put some smaller sailboats off in the distance. I can put those along the edges. Those are not important things. Some clouds along the edges, again. So now all this kind of creates a nice little frame here, and then it just makes it super clear of what that focal point is, okay? And this can be related to those thumbnails that we were talking about in the last video. Uh, it can help you to get a variety of thumbnails. So if I throw this one up here, throw in my guidelines, and it works with a vertical frame or a horizontal, let's say I put the boat up here now. And usually I put that focal point in there first. Okay. Now I'll put my land behind that sailboat. There we go. And now I have a little bit more space for rocks and things in the foreground. So not one of these is necessarily better or worse. It's just different options. Okay, so this is a good way. So when you're doing your thumbnails for a certain project, each one does not need to be dramatically different. But I can kind of just move focal points around to different thirds and judge and see what I like better. Let's do a symmetrical one of these just to compare and see what it looks like. Usually I'll try some symmetrical, some... Um, rule of thirds to see what I like best. So yeah, this is going to look a little bit more staged. All right, so these can act as thumbnails, one, two, three, and then I can see which one do I like the best, which one do I want to move forward and take to a finish, okay? But it's a really helpful way, and it almost creates it kind of like a formula for creating good compositions, but if it works, might as well use it on your, um, on your drawings and on your thumbnails and helping you to decide what will work best. Okay, so I use this all the time in my art. Usually I use that rule of thirds more, um, but sometimes I go back and try symmetrical, and you're really not going to know um, which one works until you try it out. So that's why you do it as a thumbnail. Um, so you can see it and really see what that composition will feel like. So symmetrical compositions, they feel staged. Oh yeah, make sure you guys have your sketchbooks out and you're drawing these versions along with me so you can kind of understand them. If you need to pause the video and um, sketch these up, I highly recommend that because then you'll be able to understand how these work a little bit better. So symmetrical compositions feel staged. Uh, they also can have a political feel. Political. They can also have a religious feel. And then rule of thirds. It'll feel more natural and a good division of space. Okay. Um, yeah, so for that polit political or religious field, just think of how our um, buildings, our religious buildings, churches and things like that, and our government buildings are usually all very symmetrical. So... Uh, our government buildings. So if you want to evoke those feelings, um, and you want your thing to feel more political, feel kind of powerful, then you can use and know and use this for a reason. Okay, so you want to be using these for a specific reason. So there's kind of my very quick, dirty version of whatever this is, Capitol building, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, if you want to evoke that feeling, um, think of like looking down at a preacher in the middle of the church usually has that um, 
symmetrical feeling to it as well. All right, let's look at some artists that have used this a lot. So I found a really cool website that uses um, The Incredibles as their examples. So have you guys seen The Incredibles? So they just took a bunch of uh, still screenshots through here. And uh, even this is like about as simple as a composition as you can create. It's just one focal point. And where do I put that one focal point? Character's face. They put it right here on this third. Okay, so they put the rule of thirds on there. And another thing that a uh, rule of thirds composition gets you is good use of negative space. Uh, let's go back to this and add that to our list. Use of negative, negative space. So negative space is basically empty space. So all of this now becomes negative space here. Empty, empty, empty. It is very, very, very important to utilize empty space in your compositions. So here we have focal point. negative space comes all the way around here all this is negative so some drawings you'll see you want lots of negative space some you want less um, it's good to do both and see what you like better eventually when we get into talking about moods some moods like a very calm or soothing mood you want a lot of negative space and if you want a very busy or chaotic mood you don't want negative space so using that rule of thirds can help you decide uh, where and how to use that negative space better. Here we go. Same idea again, except we got one focal point and two focal point. Now we have a nice diagonal relationship between those focal points because one's on the lower third, one's on the upper third. So that's a good way to do it. So for the most part, we will be using just one focal point. But if we do get into more complicated compositions using... Um, that rule of third to place a second focal point is a good way to do it as well. So this one's just slightly more complicated than that first version. So this one also has negative space in here. All this background is all negative space in here. Okay. Um, let's look at this one. Okay, this is by um, Howard Pyle, an artist. So we can just kind of put... So you can see it's also a nice way to divide up and put that horizon line on there. So the horizon line is usually where the sky meets the land. And you decide what you're drawing you want it to be about more. Do you want it to be more about sky or more about land? So this guy, uh, this artist determined he wants it more to be about the land because that's where the um, focal point is. All right, so as you can see, this head is not like perfectly on a third. I'm not ever going to, you know, um, take out rulers and be dividing up your thirds that way. But as long as it's approximately a third, you know, that's that's the main goal. So we got our focal point here. Uh, this secondary element here, this acts as a nice leading line. And notice this guy is not along the edge. So see if if this was cropped like right here. It would feel very weird to have this guy's face and the focal point right there by that edge. So really, just keeping those focal points away from the edge. Avoid the edge. Avoid the edge with the focal point. I see that a lot in students' work, and that's one of a uh, uh, critique I give a lot is don't put the focal point near the edge. But now it's a lot more opened up. If this is right here, yeah, it feels awkward. It feels cramped. It feels like he's about to hit his head on the top of the composition. That just opens it up a lot better. Any other good ones here? Oh, well, here's a symmetrical example. So here's a nice Captain America cover. As you can see, this one is very symmetrical because with Captain America, the character, they're trying to evoke that political feeling, a feeling of power. So boom, right down the middle, everything's divided. And you have, you have architectural elements in here, too. So they're taking, like... Um, these kind of designs that are used in um, architecture and putting that on the cover. 
Oh, here is the US Capitol. As you can see, also very symmetrical. A little nicer than my rough sketch. Okay, here's a few other ones. So, here we go. Put our guys' focal points right there on that third. Secondary focal point, bird. Um, but this one does not have a lot of negative space. This one's very busy. We, they kind of create a little negative space right here around the two focal points. Okay, but otherwise, this is a pretty busy composition without a lot of empty space. But that's okay for this scene, and it works for this composition. You can see here, I'm not sure who this artist is, but again, a nice division of space um, here. Got a third down there. Third up here, third, third, focal point right there on a third. Um, but see, now they put the horizon line down here on this third. So this is two thirds sky and one third land. Two thirds, one third. So again, nice way to, do, to um, divide the space, create big area of empty space up here. Negative space all in the sky. Even though there's some stuff going on in there, essentially it's negative space. And then this focal point can sit here nicely in the negative space. It's a nice thing to do to put your focal point in the negative space. It's a really good way to do it. All right. Let's look at one more example here. Let's go with another one of these ones. Okay, so look for this the next time you're watching a movie or looking at some photography or whatever it may be to see if you can kind of find and see other artists using that rule of thirds. It's going to be very common, um, and you can get a whole bunch of variety if you just use this. So I suggest using this on your thumbnails, and I will be looking for this in your thumbnails on not just project two, but project two, three, and the final as well. So I'm going to look for you to use these in your thumbnails. Try some that are the rule of thirds, some that are uh, symmetrical, and then see what works best to take to a final.